the next panel will start with a video. Because what I've asked, and, and actually I'm very grateful to Demosthenes, because he has already introduced Naxos, and he has already introduced some of the goats that they, are, that they were going on. Greece. Greece, Greece so what I've asked, I've asked the, uh, some good friends in Naxos, uh, the mayor of Naxos, Dimitris Lianos, Nicoletta Lianou, who is her, his sister, and Vasiliki Hadzopoulou, to go into a farm and to demonstrate how the Greek cheese is actually produced. This is a film, uh, they've done a half an hour uh, film, which will show, but we've uh, extracted about 10 or 12 minutes. It may give you an opportunity for a biological break if you need one. So we'll, we'll have a video for about uh, 12 minutes. So you all the production of Greek cheese in Naxos Island. We already started the uh, the session uh, on the dairy and the cheese production in Greece by showing a wonderful video from Naxos Island showing all the production of of cheese uh, of cheese in in Naxos. I'm joined by my good colleague uh, Perlin, uh, associate professor, who is going to introduce our speakers and we're gonna go into different clusters. So we'll first start with the clusters in Naxos with my good friend, uh, Dimitris Lanyo, uh, Lianos, Nicoletta Lianou, and Vasiliki Hadzopoulou. And then we're gonna go uh, with uh, Nana and Sylvia that we have seen before. And then we're gonna go with um, the Mevgal group with Vicky and Stavros and Stelios who is in Levant in, in Hong Kong. So Lynn. Perl. Yes. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this section. Thank you so much. And earlier we had a wonderful video uh, from Naxos Island and produced by, uh, if my pronunciation is not correct, uh, Basiliki, is that right? Basiliki. Basiliki and, and Nicoletta, uh, Nicoletta Lianos and also Dimitros uh, Liano, right? And thank you so much for uh, this wonderful video. And For today, my it's name good. is Vasiliki, and on behalf of the Grotta Hotel, I'd like to welcome you all in our beautiful island of Naxos. What I see that is missing from here is cheese. Oh yes. And Naxos is very famous for the cheese, so let's go and see how we make it. So we are now in the area of Grotta, here. Oh, by the beach, eh? by the sea. I mean, yes, that... by the sea. We are actually in one of the oldest neighborhoods of Naxos by the sea and we are going to leave from Go Grotta in order to drive through the central part of the island. This is the biggest olive grove in the Cyclades and one of the oldest with more than 100,000 olive trees and we are going to lead ourselves to Ayasos. Καλημέρα, 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 κα
This is Maria and this is Yannis. Hello, Hello Maria and Yannis. Yes, yes, yes. Nice meeting you. So today we are going to learn how to make two of the most typical Greek cheeses. Have on your mind that in Greece we have a variety of more than 120 cheeses with a certified name of an origin. Greece is the second country in Europe after France that has such a big variety of cheeses with a certified name of an origin. And here in Axos we have Arsenico, that is the king of all the cheeses. It is a very hard cheese with a very strong taste. And that's why we call it Arsenico, that means the male. And when we make Arsenico, at the same time we make a soft white cheese that is called Misithra or Filico, that means the female. So with the same procedure, we make both arsenico and mizithra. Mr. Yannis here has already started the procedure for us. He had made his sips and his goats, because this is 50% uh, sips milk and 50% uh, goats uh, milk. And he doesn't need that to be boiled. This is very important, have on your mind that uh, the animals of Naxos are in a particular race and they go through special examination so the cheese has to be not pasteurized. Okay, arsenico is a raw cheese. the rennet, it is already 35 degrees Celsius and now he will let it uh, for an hour. So after an hour he will start making the procedure for uh, giving to this uh, milk its form. The cheese, it is already on fire, for me it has become a soft uh, cheese, almost something like between soft uh, cheese and yogurt. And he uses that special uh, stick that is made with a branch uh, of an olive tree. has already put us in the procedure of making the arsenico cheese. That's the male one that uh, our friends are making right now. In these baskets, in the old times, they used to be made of uh, bamboos. Now we have those that we can use more than one time. And this is the procedure for making the strong cheese that is called arsenico. As I told you earlier, arsenico means the main. So we have to work fast and each basket makes one piece. So we need to fill every basket and push it so the liquids do not stain. So we are making both the female and the male cheese. Thank you so much for having this experience. We really nice. enjoy it. We really yes. enjoy it. Huh? Yeah, no, it's a little bit scary. Oh, yeah? Adios, adios, adios. It's very nice. This. Well done, Nikki. You are amazing doing that. Daxi, Nikki. Daxi. I really I enjoy it. Oh, wow. I can't okay. do it. It's a good one. It's proud. That's enough, Tora. 
Tore, tore. Tuba, ma mille aeg, mille tärred äkks näeks nii põnus. Vau, tore. Api näen või kõrge saadu vaist, tore. Nee, pudu. Valdi kõrges on kõrstud. Vau, look at this! Amazing! Tõsim, kui mille tärge ei jääb, kõige nii. Vau! Tu kõige see, et these are the stamps, the official stamps, et tu kõige try and find out when you want to buy something like that. The cheese will have to remain like that for an hour. Then we will add the salt that you see here. And then we will let them dry for about six days and they will need to stay in a dry place for minimum three months in order to uh, be ready to be sold. Now we are going to make the soft cheese from the same milk after making the uh, hard one that is called arsenico. Now we are making the female that is called misifera. It's my favorite. Yeah. It has to be. With honey on top. Have on your mind that in different areas in Greece it might have a different name. This is the original way. So it is called sweet misifera. When you add salt, make it salty so it becomes xenon misithra. Miss Maria here is the wife of uh, Mr. Yannis. So Mr. Yannis showed us the male one and Miss Maria now is going to show us how to make the female. This is one of the most uh, ancient products of Greece. In the old days, people knew how to make them and keep them in the caves. In Axos, we have many caves that were used since at least the Neolithic era. And The geology of Naxos is playing a very important role in our uh, traditions because our products are connected to our earth. Masiliki, why the cheese of Naxos is really the best one? I think because uh, the island has such a big variety of herbs that our animals uh, produce a milk that has a different taste. They are free range, they have the ability to go on the mountains and get a very big variety of food. Sometimes they can even go and uh, drink water from the sea, so everything becomes naturally salty. Mm. So the products that come from these animals are different, because our earth is different. Misithra is the most common cheese on our Greek salad. Feta is a cheese that we don't produce in Axos. We might be producing that, but unofficially, because it has a certified name of an origin from other areas. So you can imagine that uh, the Greek salad, as it is called, is considered to be a complete meal with protein, with everything that the body needs. And it is a salad that has a variety of cheeses depending on the area where uh, the Greek salad is produced, is made. So here in Naxos, our Greek salad is the Naxian salad and is always served with Mizithra cheese. Good for a diet. Yes, it's not so fat. It's not as fat as the arsenic That's true. Wow. This is part of our lunch. Wow. Delicious. Wow, wow. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy.
and I I would like to briefly introduce uh, Basiliki Basiliki Chapuru. Uh, he's a private licensed tour guide for Athens and Nassau's Island, and her tours focus on the range of modern and ancient life, increasingly in gastronomy. That was a really wonderful video. Thank you so much. And we also uh, have a pleasure to have uh, Demetrius. Is a uh, Mayor of Nassau and the small island, uh, Crete, and he studied business and administration in Greece, Switzerland, and America. And we also have a pleasure to have uh, Nicoletta, and he's a manager the Grotta Hotel in Nassau Island, and also uh, Liano Olive Press is located in uh, Agras. Thank you so much for a wonderful video. Thank you. Guys, um, we saw all this wonderful uh, production of cheese in, in Naxos. And uh, of course, I was with you uh, last summer and had the opportunity to see so many nice things. So uh, who should start first? Let's start with Dimitris first. Did you enjoy doing it? Did you see Naxos with the different eyes? And how, how they are doing uh, uh, the, the cheese production? Okay, thank you, Professor, for the invitation. It's, uh... I'm very glad that uh, I'm here in the company with you. Uh, of course, uh, we enjoy uh, the time of producing Arsenico and uh, Mizithra. I would like to tell uh, to everyone that Naxos, due to the fact that it has a surplus of uh, water, uh, it's very important uh, this, because Naxos is located in uh, the central of Aegean Sea. Uh, there are uh, residents here throughout the centuries, the island is inhabitant uh, from the 4000 BC. So the residents here work uh, with passion, love, and permanent uh, with the production on the ground, making uh, uh, potatoes, uh, fruits, and stuff. And of course, the production of uh, cheese. We have a lot of uh, cows and sheep. And uh, Naxos is uh, very famous and uh, has a product that are protected like uh, graviera, uh, potato, uh, and other products uh, in Greece. So uh, uh, definitely with joy, it's a farm experience. Uh, there are many visitors uh, arriving on Naxos and uh, they take part on that uh, uh, experience. It's very nice, you know, you go there and from the, moment, the first moment, you see the milking of the cows until the end, and, uh, of the production, and you have a very nice uh, brunch or lunch with the uh, locals there, and it's, uh, it, it, it's very, very uh, positive and uh, very different uh, uh, experience. And also, I want uh, to say that it's very uh, 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 gastronomical. It's uh, not only very tasteful because you participate also, but the ingredients. Uh, are very uh, safe and, of course, uh, uh, very good uh, nutritional uh, benefits. Thank you, Dimitris. Nicoletta is serving this cheese all the time at the Grotta, at the Grotta Hotel. What is, what is the reaction of people when they have Greek uh, local fresh cheese, uh, Nicoletta? I think they love it. They love it very much. And I would like to say that we invest in our mama's breakfast and the, our guests really love to have and to taste and to touch all the local products and the local uh, food. And they really love the, the cheese. And when they, we tell them, we inform them that all this pie that we offer for our breakfast have uh, this arsenico, that it has this aroma, strong aroma. And it's so nice with veggies and with meat and uh, in, in, in the pie. They really love it. And uh, the feedback is very positive. Of course, some people, I have said, because it's a strong aroma, they are a little bit up. It's a strong, but they really love having the local products, the local gastronomy, because with this way, they feel that they are part of the local culture and they can figure out a lot from this food, our behavior, our, uh, our culture and all our background. And they really love when we have the, when we fry like saganaki, they are seniko and we fry it and they, they really love it. And now my, fa my mother has found one very nice marmalade with tomatoes and the combination uh, arsenico with tomatoes marmalade is wow. something that they love it and they have it you know 
with our wine in the evening also. So I think, I feel that our mama's breakfast is goes through all day until the end with the sunset, with Arsenico, to have the Arsenico with the wine, with a view. So always Arsenico cheese can be everywhere and with every food. And my That's son fantastic. loves spaghetti with Arsenico above it. It's, it's something, oh wow, it's, 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 it's delicious. Stelios will tell you that since I came to Hong Kong, I've been asking him to, to bring Naxos uh, cheese here and uh, we need to find a way that, that he can have bring to that find a way. Yeah. as one of the... Vasiliki, now you're taking a lot of people to experience uh, this kind of agriculture in Naxos. How do they react? How do they engage with this experience? Well, they love it, but at the beginning they are very surprised because most of the people who visit Greece just know feta. So they believe that wherever they go, they will find feta. So when they have the chance to taste something so different, because arsenico is similar to a very good quality of parmigiano. This is mm -hmm. the only cheese, the Italian cheese that can be compared to. They love it and they can actually uh, be a part of the procedure of it in a tour, which is very important because it's nice when people see things, it's nice when people learn things, but it is different when people have the chance to do things. You know, it's important for them to become a part of the experience. This is something very good for the locals as well, I have to say, because this is how they understand how important what they do, how much important it is. And um, they get along with other cultures, so this gives birth to new ideas of new recipes. Okay, because Parmigiano is very dry, Arsenico mm. is so yeah. strong, it's yes. so wonderful, and the aromas yes. are kind of hitting you so hard, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. and uh, that's why it's very nice with fruits too. Mm. It's nice with uh, uh, something What's like a menu? tomato marmalade that can be yeah. used as a chutney. Something that we don't have in Greece as our tradition, but now through this contact that we come with other people, we get the chance to discover new ways of uh, presenting things that we know for thousands of years. Because Arsenico is one of the cheeses that was done in the caves mm -hmm. since thousands of years ago. We know that since the Homeric era. So you can imagine that these people, when they come and they get that taste and experience, understand that they become a part of this history. And when they go back home, if they have the chance to find the same taste, this taste brings them back immediately memories. Mm. So it is very important to offer this high quality of products abroad. Okay, it is always better when they come and they taste it here, but when they have the chance to taste it abroad, it is a way to export our culture abroad, bring back memories and bring more guests to Greece. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Vasiliki. Perl, um, would you like to introduce Sylvia and Nana that they're going to talk about our teas? And, and, and I love what, what Vasiliki said that um, a lot of people are familiar with feta cheese, but they are not yeah. familiar with the variety of the different That's things. That's right. So thank you so much. And I think I would like to quickly introduce Sylvia and Nana. I think earlier we already in the previous section. Thank you so much for joining us uh, again. Uh, Sylvia is a CEO Chef Story, is an experienced manager with demonstrate history of working in food production industry and event organization. Thank you so much, Sylvia. And we also have Nana here. Nana is a marketing consultant subject specializing in gastronomy. Thank you for joining us. And please do share with us, except uh, feta cheese, what else should we learn about uh, cheese in from Greece? Thank you. Hello again. Uh, Are so. um, we okay? Are we online? Yes. Uh, I'll share my screen immediately so we can save time. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, here we are. Okay. Uh, you see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. okay, the Greek cheese panorama. First, I'll go through just a bit basic things. 
What is cheese? Cheese is the way to preserve a precious animal-based food, milk, before refrigerators. And cheese is produced from the milk of cows, goats, sheep, and buffaloes. In Greece, we are the first in producing in the production of uh, um, cheeses from uh, sheep uh, and goats. Um, uh, cheese is very small in volume, so it's uh, better absorbed by the human body. It's portable, has long product life, and it's very high content of fat, protein, vitamins, calcium, so it's very nutritious. Uh, a bit for, for history, I think we'll go through that. Just to say about uh, this, you want to go in? Yes, the story, the story of cheese and the word, the word uh, uh, cheese has to do with uh, Zeus who created a milk rain, a rain of milk called Galaxies. And have in mind that milk in Greek is gala. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, a product that uh, came uh, uh, directly from uh, gods. Uh, this is a, a making moment of feta. Uh, Europe is the top producer of cheese in the world, and the history of cheese and the history of Europe go together. And uh, we have Germany, France, and Italy, the first three countries of producing and consuming. And we see here um, just the one thing that the consumption in kilos per capita, uh, the five countries, the last row, and the, the consumption in Greece, which is very high. And of course, it's because of feta, the first, uh, the first category uh, we produce is from fresh, from, from fresh cheese, and it's because of feta, as we said before, everybody knows feta. But there are so many other types. Uh, the types of cheeses in general uh, depend on the origin of the milk, the animal's diet, the moisture, uh, the fat, the sweetness, the bacteria, and the maturation period. And of course, the flavor agents, uh, herbs, spices, wood, and smoke. And of course, the last category, which, is, which follows the um, uh, global trends, without or with low, lactose, casein, fat, salt, for special diets. We have many PDO and PGI um, uh, specifications here, but we've said it before. Just to stop here to make a point that the country's production is very high, as you see, they're ranked here. Uh, Greece is the 10th country in the um, Europe uh, of uh, production uh, um, numbers but has so many PDOs instead of other countries that are higher in this uh, ranking that have very few, like Germany, that has only four. In Greece, we have 21 PDO cheeses. This is the map. This is the panorama that uh, I think uh, Dimitris was asking for. You see, they are everywhere. There are so many, and they, um, they come from different regions. And we we'll go through some of them, of course, starting with the feta. Okay, um, I, um, you mentioned that we have more than 120 different uh, oh, types. Like Sorry. Uh, okay, so let's go. Feta, uh, everybody knows feta. It's uh, the, Greek, the Greek cheese. It's a fresh, uh, a fresh um, uh, cheese produced from uh, milk, uh, sheep and goat milk. It's a PDO um, cheese and is uh, uh, produced in many areas in Greece, uh, like uh, Macedonia, Thrace, Epirus, Thessaly, uh, Central Greece, Peloponnesus, and the island of Lesbos. Maybe we should say that it's a buttery and spicy and uh, sometimes more salty. It has it's very characteristic aromas. And it has a minimum fat content, which is a, it's, uh, it cannot be exceeded or less because it's a PDO. And it's very, very, very strict on that, for, especially for feta. And it's used also fresh and uh, also fried or panned uh, with, um, as an ingredient or as a side dish. Another category is graviera. Uh, it is uh, produced from a sheep and milk, um, sheep and goat milk only. It can uh, be um, it can be fresh or aged matured uh, cheese. It also a PDO uh, cheese 
and produced in the Crete, uh, Agrafa area and Naxos Island. Um, <clears throat> different uh, uses, alone or uh, part of uh, uh, snacks or different dishes. Hard cheese uh, with pale yellow color, thin, dry skin, solid elastic mass. Has a characteristic, um, the small scat uh, scattered holes, a fine aroma uh, and sweet and uh, delicate taste. Uh, usually we also find it in pies, the, the famous Greek pies, and um, uh, used as a, in a plateau of uh, cheeses next to a glass of wine or a bottle of wine. Okay. Another famous category is mizithra. Uh, we, uh, Naxos uh, produces mizithra, so, uh, so they are very experienced. Fresh and uh, sweet cheese. Uh, Again, from sheep and goats uh, milk, uh, or cow's milk, um, soft, semi hard, not hard. Uh, um, Mizithra is no epidiotes. It is produced all over Greece, mainly in Crete, Peloponnesus, and Limnos. Uh, soft and uh, sure, dry aged, um, and, or fresh can be consumed in different, uh, in different ways. Another cheese is arsenico. We uh, heard a lot and learned a lot about arsenico. Um, a PDO cheese uh, produced only in the area of Naxos is a, a fresh cheese from goat and uh, sheep, and uh, usually goat and sheep uh, milk. Uh, a hard cheese, very buttery, um, a, a special soft tex texture, spicy, spicy and wonderful uh, taste and aftertaste. Also can be used in, uh, in can be consumed in different uh, dishes. La Dottiri, another um, famous cheese, um, produced from sheep and the goat milk. Um, it is a PDO cheese in the area of Mytilene, the island of uh, Lesbos. Um, traditional hard yellow cheese, in a round shape, usually under a kilo, it's sold in this uh, format. Uh, again, uh, different uses, fresh or fried. Very often found fried, actually. Mm. And uh, finally, halloumi. Um, this is a fresh and sour cheese uh, produced from sheep and uh, goat, goat milk and sometimes can be mixed with cow milk. Um, it is a PDO product, but not of Greece, of uh, Cyprus, but also well-known and a, a very large cheese in the area of uh, Greece. Um, fresh baked or uh, mature, we can consume it fresh baked or fried or uh, as a matured uh, cheese. And again, uh, different uses, usually uh, baked or um, fried in a special dishes as a mezze and, and as a starter. So this is the um, uh, panorama of Greek cheese. The only way to learn uh, to learn a lot about cheese is to visit Greece and to travel in the whole country. So in every different place, we can uh, taste a different cheese. Uh, in general, we can say that uh, Greek in Greece and Greek cheese, cheese, cheeses go, go with everything. Mm -hmm. We eat them as breakfast um, and brands in snacks, raw or, or cooked um, in pies, in omelets, um, in a plateau for, to, to pair wines or uh, other drinks. Also, um, uh, it's, you can, in Greece, you will always find a piece of cheese during lunch or, and during dinner. Of course, in salads, the famous uh, horiatic salad is um, characterized by feta cheese. You also find it as a main ingredients in the main dishes like uh, pasticcio or uh, next to a great uh, known dish like uh, yemistar we see here down uh, on the side. It's also a filling of uh, stuffed meat or poultry dishes, and uh, usually you can find it uh, um, on the table as it is, just to have it there with only 
uh, this is uh, like vegetables cooked and with uh, this is with red sauce and most of the time we find uh, feta graviera or any other cheese we mentioned before and finally when we finish dinner uh, because usually we have not a lot ate a lot and we have a, a bit of uh, space Either we serve it as, uh, as it is, just to end up uh, our uh, bottles of wine or, or, or uso, and or we have it as a dessert, very, a very, used th a very known thing, uh, plate in uh, Naxos and in islands and usually in Crete, like Raviera with honey or with some homemade spoon sweets. Uh, or with pastry, we have Mizithra pastry like... Um, small round pasta um, um, sweets in Crete. So we have cheese with every occasion, as we said before, um, everyday life, in special dinners, party, everything. And it's a very nice um, uh, reason to visit places, to go visit the cheese makers, uh, like uh, Vasiliki is being the guide. And we do some tours also, the food uh, stories Thessaloniki and Northern Greece as a company is something that is um, very interesting and helps also the producer to uh, introduce himself and feel proud. Thank you for your time. Thank and you I very much, uh, Silvia and Nana. I, I actually, I've never seen that before, the panorama of Greek teas. We uh, made it. We, we can, you can find it. it. I can send it to you. Thank you so much. Unbelievable. We couldn't you know, find so? any, any map with that. So we Absolutely. made one. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, and now we're going to our friends in Mevgal. Mevgal is a very big company. And I guess uh, Vicky and Stavros are going to talk to us about not only cheese, but also yogurt uh, and, and what they are producing. We're running out of time. We've got about 15 minutes and then we'll bring Stelios. Uh, uh, who is uh, bringing a lot of these things into Hong Kong and he'll tell you how to have the opportunity to get these things. And in the meanwhile, we'll get sellers to think how we can bring cheese from Naxos to Hong Kong because we need that. Okay, Vicky Stavros. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so I'm Stavros Lavoyanis. I'm the account manager of uh, Medgal, responsible for the market uh, of Hong Kong. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be with you, uh, even via Zoom. I hope uh, to be able to visit Hong Kong in person uh, as soon as possible. So, um, do we have the presentation? No. Can you see our presentation? No. No, it doesn't. It, it, um... Yes, we can. Uh, great. So, uh, in our presentation, my colleague and I will uh, try to introduce you to the unique, authentic uh, Greek products of Mevgal. Uh, as you see, discover uh, Mevgal. So, let's discover. Let's discover it. Uh, slide. So, uh, Mevgal was founded uh, was founded in uh, 1950 from uh, Konstantinos Hadzakos, and for 72 years and five generations. It remains until today uh, faithful to the quality and tradition of its products. It is a 100% Greek private uh, family owned business, uh, a true, a real success uh, story until today. Uh, slide. Uh, Mevgal is placed uh, in uh, Kufalia, a traditional Greek village in northern Greece. And from the 80s, when the export activity started until today, it has developed an exports network in over 35 countries in all continents of the planet, uh, achieving the vision of its founders from our local farms in Northern Greece to your table. Uh, slide. Um, and indeed, um, all local farms are within uh, a radius of about uh, 50, kilom uh, 50 kilometers from uh, our plant facilities so that we collect uh, the fresh milk in a daily basis um, uh, with which uh, through the most modern processes but always faithful to the traditional recipes um, we produce our, our unique uh, products. Uh, building uh, on our experience and knowledge we stay true to, to our founders vision 
authentic, Greek high-quality uh, dairy products. Uh, now, the senior brand manager of Mevgal, Mrs. Uh, Vicky Beta, uh, will talk uh, to you about what those products represent. Uh, Vicky, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stavros. Uh, so previously, I noted something that uh, Mrs. Hazopoulou mentioned about memories and about the Greek experience. Uh, so actually, as you can see in these uh, images uh, which we show, uh, there are beautiful sceneries, warm lightning, people enjoying life of a uh, Greek island while uh, tasting Greek yogurt and feta cheese in a Greek salad. Uh, these images identify us as a brand. So this is how we have created, um, uh, with these principles, we have created our products. Uh, we have created our advertisements, and uh, this is how we promote ourselves uh, ourselves throughout the world. Um, so, this next topic is uh, really important to us. Uh, here in Mevgal, we care about the impact that we have both on social and on environmental level. And some examples of uh, this uh, might be that uh, we provide daily um, milk to children in need, uh, tons of milk. And uh, an environmental act that we uh, recently do uh, did was that we cleaned the beach. We went all together as a company in a nearby beach um, here in uh, Caterini. Uh, and uh, we cleaned it all morning. And then we were, we were really proud about the um, and what we stand for and uh, how we protect uh, the environment with um, our actions. So um, now um, Stavros will join us again and uh, he will tell us a few things that make our products uh, unique. Uh, basically, he will talk about uh, authentic Greek yogurt and uh, authentic Greek feta and what makes them really special products. Um, thank you, Vicky. Uh, so, let's start with uh, the famous Greek yogurt. Uh, Methyl Greek yogurt is produced from uh, Greek fresh cow's milk uh, with the addition of uh, active cultures like Tobaculus bulgaricus and uh, Streptococcus thermophilus. Rich in protein and calcium, it is world-renowned for its uh, unique texture and rich flavor. Uh, which uh, is completely natural without any addition of sugar, preservatives, or uh, artificial coloring. It is a gluten-free product, while uh, in our portfolio you may also find uh, options for uh, lactose-free uh, Greek yogurts. Uh, slide, please. The, um, the second flagship product of our assortment is feta, but uh, before we move on it, uh, let's look at some historical uh, fun facts. Feta was first produced uh, 8,000 years ago in ancient Greece. Uh, in fact, one of the most um, famous books of all time, uh, Homer's Odyssey, states that uh, Cyclops Polyphemus was the first feta producer um, when he tried to transport milk in stomachs of uh, young animals. And uh, after he kept that for several days, uh, through the active cultures that were inside of the of the, the animal's stomach, he observed that it started to, to curdle, becoming a tasty solid mass. Uh, the word feta, uh, uh, feta as a name, um, literally means slice in the Greek language, and uh, it exists from the 17th uh, century. Uh, feta's international fame is uh, mainly attributed to the mass immigration of Greeks in the 20th century. So um, let us see what makes this amazing uh, Greek cheese uh, special. Uh, slide, please. So uh, feta is produced exclusively from 100% Greek fresh sheep and goat's milk in a ratio of about 70-30. It is an excellent uh, probiotic is a good source of vitamins, and uh, just like Greek yogurt, is a natural source of protein and calcium. Uh, during the maturation process of the product, the lactose levels um, fall. Uh, it is not a lactose-free product, but it has a really low content of lactose. Um, it is also, just like Greek yogurt, a gluten-free product. 
the the acronym PDO that we that we say, and for those who uh, who do not know, stands for Protected Designation of Origin, and it it is a certification under the European Union law which uh, ensures that the product was produced in the place indicated and under very, very strict procedures following uh, the traditional uh, recipe. Uh, Vicky? Thank you, Stavros. So as you understood from uh, Stavros' speech, our products stand on their own and they are perfectly delicious as they are. Uh, however, we are constantly searching for recipes which uh, use our product as a uh, main ingredient. Uh, some of them are uh, like, this recipe here, tzatziki salad, very famous dish, uh, Greek dish. Um, but we also, except from traditional dishes, we try to follow the worldwide trends and see what recipes uh, people are creating all over the world uh, using our products. So for example, last year, um, it was a huge trend, feta baked pasta. If you don't, uh, if you've never seen it, search it. Um, everyone was on the internet recreating the recipe and uploading it. And the same thing with uh, this year's trend, uh, this time with uh, Greek yogurt, the famous yogurt toast, really easy, uh, really tasty, delicious. So as you can see, we are working with chefs, we are working with uh, photographs, food photographs, with food stylists. We try to give our consumers uh, the best we can with uh, the recipes and the ideas that we provide them. So if you want to see uh, these recipes that I showed you, or if you want to see all the others that we have done all these years, uh, take your phone, scan this QR code. It will lead you to our website. Go directly to the recipe section and get inspired. And if you uh, recreate one of the recipes, please send it to us in this email that shows down in the screen. Uh, we are really happy to receive uh, uh, images and comments and recipe ideas from all over the world and try to recreate them with uh, our products. So, Mevgal is your authentic Greek experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vicky and Stavros. I can see Pearl, uh, Pearl likes Greek cheese and Greek yogurt a lot. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for your wonderful sharing. And that, that gives us a lot of idea how to prepare and then how to use Greek yogurt and Greek cheese. Thank you so much. So I think we have the next uh, speaker, uh, Stelio. Yes, yeah, Stelio, you are here, right? So it's a pleasure to have Stelio and he's currently uh, building up the Lavinfu in Hong Kong and always uh, looking for the new opportunity. So Stelio, you will start with the presentation first. You are on You're mute. muted, Stelio. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. So you have anything so to share with us, please? I have a lot of things to share with you, Paul, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, regarding we the really, cheeses, I think... Stelios, uh, we, we really love to know uh, how the Hong Kong people uh, love the Greek dairy products because you've been importing them mm, for a long time. Sure. Yeah. I think regarding the cheeses, the previous speakers have done a magnificent job to uh, introduce us uh, to the wonders of uh, Greek uh, dairy. Um, so I think I don't really have anything else to contribute to that. What I will contribute to is the scene in Hong Kong uh, as concerning Greek products, which is what we're doing. Uh, our company has been um, established for the last five years, and uh, I can say that we are the go-to um, Greek, dedicated Greek importers into Hong Kong with a wide range of products. Um, and dairy, of course, is a main category for us and it's a category which we've seen substantial growth um, over the last five years. Um, now when we started I think Greek products were really not really on the map, not really on the scene uh, and, and, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is that we don't have a, a very big Greek community here in Hong Kong, there's no diaspora in the same way that you would find in uh, London or, or Melbourne or New York. 
Uh, for example, uh, we have a very small community here which doesn't have the numbers to support uh, a Greek uh, culinary uh, industry here in Hong Kong. So uh, that was the first uh, challenge that we had. So we are predominantly speaking to people, um, to consumers who uh, are not really aware. The second was that um, a lot of the local population has not traveled to Greece. Um, so it's not like the Germans or the French uh, or the Brits who, for them, it's uh, Greek food is second nature. There, a lot of them have traveled, uh, the food is in their own country, so they're very familiar. So we had these two, two, two challenges uh, to overcome. So what we did was to actually present Greek food uh, in its uniqueness. Uh, and dairy is definitely a category that is unique, especially the Greek yogurt and certain cheeses. Um, and we try to help chefs and uh, businesses uh, understand how they can use it in the context of their menus. Um, so for this reason, we've been targeting mostly um, Mediterranean and Middle Eastern type of, uh, of cuisines. There are several Greek restaurants in Hong Kong, which we, which we supply, of course, uh, but we cannot live off uh, just two restaurants. Uh, so we had to expand uh, the market by uh, appealing to other types of businesses. Um, so education was a big challenge and it's something that we've been doing for five years um, and it's been challenging, but I think we're seeing a steady uptake from a lot of uh, restaurants, uh, catering businesses. And of course, uh, we have our Mevgal yogurts because we are the uh, dis uh, exclusive uh, distributors of Mevgal in Hong Kong and Macau, which is now available across all the dairy farm welcome marketplace uh, stores across uh, Hong Kong. Uh, but on the food service side, which is um, also quite interesting, I think we're seeing more and more people appreciating the qualities of uh, Greek products. And uh, Greek yogurt for us is, is, is a leader. Uh, it has unique characteristics which um, um, have been appreciated and uh, more and more chefs are switching uh, across to those products. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and we're seeing uh, you know, dramatic growth on, on the dairy side. Um, so um, the trends generally uh, we've seen around uh, yogurt, for example, is that, of course, many expats are familiar with Greek yogurt and, uh, uh, and know it. But the local population, I think it's something new in the last uh, five to 10 years. Uh, we've seen, certainly since I've been in Hong Kong uh, for the last uh, seven years, I've definitely seen a, a massive growth in the dairy section in the supermarkets, if you went into into Welcome or, or any supermarket five, ten years ago, you would see quite a limited range of dairy, uh, of yogurt, for example. If you if, if someone walked into one of the supermarkets now, you would certainly see a big a big range on the shelf uh, of a variety of yogurts coming from all around the world. Uh, Greek yogurt is 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 presents itself as a premium product. Uh, because of its uh, premium qualities, it's, uh, it's natural, um, no additives, no preservatives, very high uh, health benefits uh, type of product. So that's what we pitch at. Uh, it's not the cheapest, uh, but people appreciate the value they're getting. Um, and uh, we've definitely seen people understand why they should be buying uh, this product. On the cheese side, uh, I think Hong Kong is a, is a market, is an import, is a food import uh, nation where we really have products from all around the world. So there are literally thousands of cheeses from any country you can imagine uh, can be found in Hong Kong. So I've heard, uh, Mihalis, um, I, I hear you about Naxos and many other parts of Greece uh, that we would love to bring uh, really a myriad of cheeses into town. Um, but the truth is, is numbers. It's a case of uh, marketing it, uh, getting people to, to understand what the product's in. So we need, to, we need to take it step by step. Uh, but we'll get them. We'll get them. I think there's one thing I need to say here, Stelios. Uh, there's a lot of competition of Greek style uh, yogurt. Mm. Sure. And I think a lot of people start realizing that Greek style, Greek yogurt doesn't have sugar in there. And it's much more yeah. hygienic and uh, much, much better uh, for, for many people. And the Greek style uh, yogurt has got a lot of sugar in there. And I think that we really need to make a lot of noise about that uh, because um, uh, people like uh, uh, Pearl and, and Michelle early on 
when we're discussing about these things, they always uh, look into the Greek product, uh, the Greek yeah. yogurt, uh, yeah. because of the lower content of sugar. You're, you're absolutely right, uh, Mihalis. The, this, this challenge of Dimitri. getting people to understand the difference is, is, is one of our major challenges. And I have to say that only two days ago, we had a meeting with our marketing agency, our media agency, and we will be embarking on a campaign uh, around uh, uh, April for two or three months where we will be uh, on the social media and across all the media channels, uh, really educating people around the differences of what is Greek yogurt, what is the authentic mm -hmm. Greek yogurt, and why indeed they should care about it. I mean, uh, it's one thing to educate people about what the difference is, but why should, why should they care about it? Why should they prefer it? So we really need to get, get those, uh, those, those selling points across. Uh, and we are embarking on a, on a promotion, uh, an educational promotion, uh, to, to exactly point out these differences. We will be your partner on this. And we'll, uh, once, the, once we've got the uh, facilities open again due to the regulations, COVID will be uh, more than happy uh, in the Polytechnic University to invite people. And Stavros needs to send us a lot of samples of Greek cheeses and yogurt <laughs> uh, so we can educate our students. I mean, today our students were happy. cooking Greek happy. food uh, and, and, and they are getting to know a lot of these things and we need to go through, through those. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Pearl, would you like to close this session so we can go to wine and beer? Okay, uh, thank you so much for everyone joining us uh, for this uh, Greek dairy product, especially on the cheese and Greek yogurt. And today we definitely have learned a lot of good knowledge here about how to use Greek yogurt and the different type of Greek cheese. And I'm sure everyone will be really want to know more about Greek product and stereo. We are looking forward to have more Greek product in the Hong Kong market. And once again, thank you everyone. And thank you, Nicoletta. And thank you, uh, Dimitris. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nana. And thank you, Sylvia, everyone. And Vicky, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.